Like, dude, you have an unhealthy obsession with Xbox. You just can't stop talking about Xbox. Can you? Can you, Foxy Games? Can you? Well, if I'm obsessed about anything, truth be told, I'm quite obsessed about not wasting my time and money on pointless hardware. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about Xbox. Don't care about your feelings. So, you know, these people are casting aspersions, accusations that we are absolutely obsessed with talking about Xbox when there's nothing that's all Xbox puts out there into the universe is bad news. So I'm afraid if you want positive uh, narrative about Xbox, go talk to Microsoft. Have a word with Phil Spencer if he'll listen. In fact, Phil Spencer doesn't seem to be listening to anybody at the moment, judging by his interview at Kinda Funny Xcast podcast, where he outright told you to your face, you've purchased a $500 piece of plastic that's gonna have middling games that's not going to attempt, even attempt, to gain any traction from Nintendo or Sony, even though they could. I don't buy that nonsense argument about making great games isn't going to change Xbox's fortunes. Why are you in the game making business if not to make great stuff? What's the point? Even more hilarious is the countless ridiculous tweets coming from Xbox users or multi-platform users, but they own an Xbox Series X, threatening to sell their Series X or Series S. So overdramatic that it's, it's almost gay. You'll lose your purchases, your whole digital library. Xbox Series X is not in great demand, neither is the S. So if many people were to sell their Xbox Series X and S consoles, well, the oversaturation would yield poor returns for your money. Pointless. I mean, look, those old enough to remember the awesome Xbox 360 era, it's clear for me and anyone from that time to see that Microsoft desperately needs a new Steve Ballmer and a new Peter Moore. Those guys got things done. They kicked ass when ass needed to be kicked play with game pass the current microsoft xbox leadership and strategy is so severely flawed it's laughable i mean i was watching the interview like many of you and that xbox phil spencer interview made me feel like i was robbed like in broad daylight robbed when I bought the Xbox Series X. I believed all the nonsense about this is the end of the Xbox One era, the troublesome, turbulent times. This is a new beginning. The most powerful next-gen systems. I mean, in 2020, between Xbox Series X reveal and its launch, we were told by countless Microsoft executives and the media, and the media, we're not letting them off the hook. We were told it was communicated to us the Xbox Series X is a 12 T flop, unstoppable beast, a powerhouse. There'd be no compromise 4K, 60 FPS, the best place to play, multi platform, the best place to play, Xbox first party AAA games. And yesterday we were told to expect middling 60 plus reviewed games and that making great games is not the answer to competing with Sony and Nintendo. So what is then making mediocre games? How will that help you? In fact, I don't even buy this notion about exclusive need to die, because even if you have a subscription service, you're gonna need exclusives. You need a reason why they should go to you and not PlayStation Plus. They should go to you and not go to another service provider. That's why you can't ever get rid of exclusives. That's why HBO has its shows, Netflix has its shows, Prime has its shows, Hulu, Apple. Otherwise they'd all have access to the same stuff. There'd be no exclusive shows and my goodness have those shows better be good in order to retain viewership. But I don't know if Xbox gets that. I think it's okay to just dump a 
cruddy middling game onto the, the game pass because you know what it's more like a early access thing isn't game pass remember before game pass it was early access games launched onto the xbox ecosystem that were clearly unfinished but they didn't lie back then they told you these games are still in development some of them are in there for years game pass was meant to be different you're paying for whole complete games in your subscription service access to those games I think that kind of funny ex-cast Phil Spencer interview really only demonstrated to me that Jim Ryan has a lot more fire in his belly. Phil Spencer looked worn down, depleted and defeated. It was horrible to see. But, you know, the empathetic side of me is slightly concerned with Phil Spencer's health. I mean, his job has heaps of pressure and it's incredibly stressful. He should put his family and his health first. The job just isn't worth it. There'd be no shame in just walking away. Would I want to see the guy get fired? Not particularly. I think he should have the good grace to walk away and let someone with some fire in them, a fighter, take over. We need another Peter Moore. Phil's just too nice for the job. On the outside, I don't know what this guy's like. I don't I don't know this guy. But he portrays nice Mr. Nice Guy. And it just don't work in this business. You have to be ruthless. That's why people don't like Jim Ryan. Because he, you know, even I think he's got no charisma and stuff, but he gets the job done. He knows what he's doing. And people say, don't worry about Phil Spencer, he's rich. If Microsoft get rid of him, he'd get a whole, you know, tens of millions in severance pay. Who gives a damn about money if your mental health is gone? What use is money if you're empty inside? All this money, you think money is the, the key to happiness? It isn't, trust me. I've had no money, I've, I've had plenty of money, I've had no money again, I've had plenty of money. I can tell you now, it's not the money, it's the person on the inside. Money's not evil, it's the person who has the money that makes that money evil, okay? Money is an inanimate object. It has no value about human desire. So, money aside, yeah, he's got a few bob in the bank, you know, he's doing okay. You've got to have a human side to this as well. I wasted a lot of money on the Xbox, thousands. If you include all the, the games, the, the few controllers I've purchased, the unit itself. If you look at the ongoing Game Pass Ultimate subscription that I've paid for since late into the Xbox One X's life. So it's been, you know, it just carried on with the Series X. If you think about that, I've spent thousands. My investment has gone into the thousands. So I have a right to complain. But then I also can put that aside and think, you know, there's a human being at the end of all this. I'm a consumer, but Phil Spencer cannot manage on a micro level. His management is macro level. That's why he hires total waste of time people like Matt Booty, who obviously isn't doing his job. I don't know why Phil Spencer is lying on a sword for Matt Booty. This man seems to escape all of the trauma at Xbox. Nobody brings him up. I'm afraid there's simply too much hope required to be an Xbox gamer. Wait till next year this, wait till next year that, this quarter, that quarter, no quarter, we broke. The games are broke. I mean, before the interview, I even tweeted, you know, I predicted what would go down during this interview. Many people said that the kind of funny crew would go easy on him, you know, sort of softball interview. I weren't buying that. Gary Witt Witter was there. This guy, I know Gary, his work from in the past. This man speaks his mind, although he, he did, he could have gone harder on Phil, but you could see Phil was already broken. Why kick a man when he's down? But I predicted how the interview would go. You know, Phil Spencer appearing on Kind of Funny to give his speech, you know, like, we hear you, we're listening, we'll do better. We put our games front and center of everything we do. When I look at the industry today, I'm encouraged by yada, yada, yada. Yeah, he pretty much did that and more. Perhaps he was too honest. In fact, come to think of it, the best thing he could have 
done is not do the interview <laughs> honestly because i think what he's honest he's made it worse he's literally ripped the heart out of those xbox gamers that was hoping microsoft was really going to go at it really go, but really they're just interested in you know sandwich filling game pass filler you know when you buy one of those pies at the gas station yeah or something you know like a mince pie or steak beef pie it's always gravy most of the time, isn't it? You hardly get, well, I can speak for the UK. In the UK, it's mostly gravy. You get these bins, these remnants of meat and fat and gristle. It, you know, you might get a, a one or two chunks of meat, but for your money, it's mostly gravy and pastry. That's what Game Pass is. It's gravy and pastry with the odd occasional chunk of meat. So basically, you're not getting nourished. You're not getting any of that iron gaming. You're just getting gravy. It's like soup gaming, you know? Soup, it's very watery. There's no substance to the soup. And these people trying to, ridiculous, ridiculous people, trying and failing to absolve Microsoft of all responsibility for the travesty that was Redfall. Let me tell you something, Phil Spencer said it himself. Microsoft are responsible for everything, everything it puts out. The Xbox brand, should not be associating itself with substandard low quality game productions stop the cap please and it's nice to see people like colt eatwood and others eatwood did i say eatwood i meant to say colt eastwood and others who played a redfall build months ago on pc and uh, in a controlled environment he said he had fun he even done a montage to try and boost the the game's fortunes didn't work. None of them told us how shitty this game was, but then again, they can argue that they played a vertical slice and it was months before release and they expected it to improve. So they can uh, hide behind that one, which uh, I don't buy, but I don't think we should be blaming them. I think you need to direct your ire, your season of discontent to senior management at Xbox. There's no point having a go at those attendees of the Red Fort preview that's a pointless exercise they're not in charge what can they do phil spencer even said he hears these guys talking and that what they're talking is basically nonsense to go out and just spend money on great games and triple a games and produce great games you know because you want your console to be great you want your ecosystem to be great but that's dumb why would i do that i'm not trying to out console sony i'm not trying to out game sony i'm quite happy to have the odd banger and mostly shite middling games that score 60 even lower 59 uh and shove them onto game pass because we're not really here to challenge sony or nintendo we're doing our own thing you know we're driving in the tortoise lane yeah but only this version of the story the tortoise does not win the race the hare long won it a few generations ago um so yeah nursery rhymes aside kitty rhymes aside but uh yeah you've even got these shills queen of the shills andrea pichichinini whatever her name is even if it's a her i don't even know at this point hard to tell these days but this person is putting up tweets we live in a sad period of gaming history when we wait several years or more years for delays for games to launch and then we must wait for months until we can finally play them in a decent condition listing how many one two three four five five playstation 5 games only one xbox game redfall and the other two are cyberpunk and jedi survivor you see how they made sure to outnumber the broken games that they claim are broken at launch outnumber the xbox with ps5 games how can you be such a shill how can you and the claims that those playstation games took several years to launch more years for delays and then months to be playable what a sad emotionally pathetic emotionally erratic empty tiny vessel of a fragile human being this is what a muppet arguing with everybody skill up everyone on twitter because they don't agree with the truth all because this individual's right and everyone else is just so totally darned wrong about Red Fallen Xbox and its fortunes, Queen Shill. The truth is, the Xbox Showcase June had better be amazing. I'm not confident, because Phil didn't sound confident. 
dejected Phil did not sound confident. He talked about Starfield being possibly an 11 out of 10, hypothetically, nobody's going to sell their PS5s. Well, they don't need to sell their PS5s. They only need to buy an Xbox to play those bangers. Why can't the two coexist? Why does one have to be sold to maintain the other? Didn't Phil say, why does one thing have to be shitted on for the other thing to be great? Oh, no one's selling their PS5s if Starfield is a total banger. This is contradictory narrative. You can't do, stop it, Phil. Don't make life worse for yourself. For yourself, Phil. Do not make life for yourself more difficult than it has to be, okay? Now everything, and I mean absolutely everything. I'm talking the kitchen, the downstairs living room, the bathroom, the four bedrooms, the garden, the pool, the jacuzzi, it's all on Starfield. And if that doesn't live up to expectations, it is game over for Xbox, I'm telling you. Game over. Um, it's not just about Redfall, it's about a sequence of mishaps. If it was just about Redfall, we'd have nothing to say. Because even Sony have had a few letdowns with their third party partnerships, not their first party, third party partnerships on console, not PC, for Spoken, which I've been very vocal about. I don't like the game. I think it's not up to the standard of PlayStation exclusives. I've said that. I made a whole video on it. But people keep bringing it up every time Redfall's mentioned, like I didn't say anything about For Spoken. Like I haven't criticized Jim Ryan like I'm criticizing Phil Spencer. Even though this is a half criticism, because I kind of feel sorry for Phil. He's got no backup, he's all on his own. When the shit hits the fan, Phil Spencer's the one swallowing the feces. This isn't right. Matt Booty's head should be on a stake. And I mean that metaphorically, people. Yeah, metaphorically. Redfall, steak, get it? All right, never mind. It's looking like Xbox won't get Activision Blizzard. And it's going to cost Microsoft the equivalent or more or less what Sony paid for Bungie. Yeah, no Xbox Acti and a whole three billion dollar exit fee. How about that? I don't know, man. I don't know what I listen. Listen, I haven't got the answers. It's not my job. I'm not Xbox executive. I don't have to come up with strategies and plans to how to make this thing better. But it, it, it just seems to me, it occurs to me, that just put, upping your quality and having people who already own a Switch, already own a PlayStation, have them desire your console or game even. They don't even have to desire the console. Maybe they'll upgrade their PC just to play those kick-ass Xbox games, but you give no reason for them to even do that. And you're gonna launch Starfield in the wake of Spider-Man 2. Good Lord, that's going to destroy, destroy, seek and destroy. This is a web of misery coming Starfield's way. They better be two weeks apart. I'm telling you, at least two weeks. You know, at the end of the day, someone said to me on Twitter, third party exclusive deals are not investments. So there's no point Microsoft, you know, injecting money into third party exclusive deals. How will Xbox pay back the $70 billion if it were to use that money? Well, first of all, they have to use all that money, but I'm not one of Microsoft's accountants. You're asking the wrong person, but rebuilding consumer trust in the Xbox brand should be the top priority as always. And perhaps even sell a few more subscriptions and consoles based on the high quality games you're supposed to be delivering. And you know, you don't have to use the 70 billion, the whole 70 billion on third party deals, but something needs doing and pronto. You know, investing in third party exclusives to make your platform more desirable and upping the quality of those first party games seems like investment to me. What do you guys think? Let, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. But I'll leave you with this. Sony's PlayStation 5 has the high-end premium console market all to itself. There literally is no competition. No, what say you? 
Let's continue the discussion cordially in the comments. So that brings us to the end of the video, but uh, just like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment regularly on videos, and you can help Foxy Games UK reach more gamers, so feel free to share the video. You may also wish to consider supporting Foxy Games via Patreon because, well, we're like family now, and damn well I'll tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. Link in the description. But that concludes our time together on this Friday. I hope you have a in light of everything, decent as it is, as can be, weekend. But play games, not corporations.